Infinite series and sequences. The topics I will be covering are mentioned in the description. Go through them. I will be following the book Advanced Eng Engineering Mathematics, Volume 1 by H. Teneja. Do practice example sums and exercises from it. Really helps. Sequences. Sequences are an ordered set of numbers, u1, u2, u3, and so on, denoted by curly brackets un, where un is the nth or the general term. For example, 2, 4, 8, 10, and so on, where the general term is curly brackets 2n, or minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and so on, where the general term is curly brackets minus 1 to the power of n. A number l is called the limit of an infinite sequence, u1, u2, u3, or as n tends to infinity, the general term becomes l. If L exists in a sequence, then the sequence is called convergent, otherwise it's divergent or oscillating. For any convergent sequence, the limit is always unique, which means that 1 by 2n minus 1 is convergent, but however 2n is divergent. But the sequence minus 1 to the power n minus 1 is oscillating. It oscillates between minus 1 and positive 1 that can be understood by simple logic. Bounded sequences if un is less than or equal to capital M where m is a constant, we say un is bounded above and m is the upper bound of un. And if un is greater than or equal to small m where m is a constant, then un is bounded below and small m is the lower bound of un. And if m less than or equal to un which is less than or equal to m, then the sequence is called a bounded sequence. Every convergent sequence is bounded. However, the converse is not true. Take this sequence for example. It is bounded by negative and positive 1, but we know that the sequence is oscillatory. Monotonic sequences. Here we can understand that it is a sequence u n where every next term is greater than the previous one. It is said to be monotonically increasing and vice versa monotonically decreasing. Series. Don't get to confuse with sequences. It is series that really matter in life that serve the ultimate purpose of fetching your good grades. Series just make sequences of real numbers look cooler. If u1, u2, u3, un and so on is an infinite sequence, then u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus un and so on is an infinite series. Remember how we denoted sequences with this un? Well, series are denoted by sigma of un where n ranges from 1 to infinity. Or if you're lazy, you can just grab these off and write sigma un n. Or if you're me, you can simply write sigma un. Forget the n. Just sitting there wasting ink. Precious, precious ink. The sum of the first n terms of a series denoted by Sn, which equals u1 plus u2 plus un, is called the nth partial sum of un. Also, did you know that the sequence Sn is called the sequence of partial terms of the infinite series un? Thus, to every infinite series un, there corresponds a sequence Sn of its partial sums. But nobody cares. Our area of concern is to find the convergence, divergence, or oscillations of a series. Your ABCs of the chapter. A. If Sn tends to a unique finite limit as n tends to infinity, then un is said to be convergent. b. If Sn tends to an infinite limit as n tends to infinity, then un is said to be divergent. And c. If Sn does not tend to a unique limit finite or infinite as n tends to infinity, then un is said to be oscillatory. And to find out the convergence of series, we have a couple of tests. The comparison test, the ratio test, the integral test, Rab's test, and the logarithmic test. And probably a few more other tests, but I won't be covering those. The comparison test. First, we need to know what positive term series are. An infinite series in which all the terms after some finite number of terms are positive. For example, the series minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and so on is a positive term series because after a few terms, positive or not, it gets positive. Coming back to the comparison test, consider two positive term series, u1 and vn. Case 1. If vn is convergent and un is less than or equal to vn for all values of n, then un is also convergent. Case 2. If vn is divergent and un is greater than or equal to vn for all values of n, then un is also divergent. However, the most important case is case 3. If limit of un by vn where n tends to infinity is a non-zero finite quantity, then un and vn converges together. The ratio test or the D'Ambert's ratio test. If un is a positive term series such that un by un plus 1 where n tends to infinity is equal to k, then the series un converges for k greater than 1, diverges for k less than 1, and the test fails for k equals to 1, which means that we have to move on to the next test. The integral test. Consider a positive term series f of n plus f of 2 plus f of 3 f of n and so on, where f of n decreases as n increases. Then the series converges if the integration of f of x dx from 1 to infinity has a finite value, but diverges if it has an infinite value. To Rab's test. 
we have seen that the ratio test fails to a limit of un by un plus 1 where n tends to infinity equals 1. So we move on to apply the apps test on the series to test its convergence, which is if limit of n times un by un plus 1 minus 1 where n tends to infinity equals k, then if k is greater than 1, the series converges, if k is less than 1, the series diverges, but if k is equal to 1, once again it fails. So we move on to the logarithmic test, which is if the limit of n log un by un plus 1 where n tends to infinity is equal to k, then again the series converges for k greater than 1, diverges for k less than 1, and fails for k equals to 1. But don't worry, all these tests don't usually fail so far. If they do, we move on to cauchy zeus root test or Gauss's test, which won't fail because the divergent conditions is k less than or equal to 1. Alternating series. So far, we have worked ahead of to find the convergence of positive term series. Now we land ourselves upon alternative series. A series in which the terms are alternative, positive or negative is called an alternating series. For example, 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 and so on. The general form of the series is usually u1 minus u2 plus u3 minus u4 plus blah minus blah plus blah and so on. To find its convergence, we have the Leibniz test. The Leibniz test, which states that an alternating series u1 minus u2 plus u3 minus u4 and so on is convergent if each term is numerically less than the preceding term. That is u1 is greater than u2 which is greater than u3 which is greater than u4 and so on. Also the limit on un with where n tends to infinity equals 0. Finally, we come to the absolute convergence of series. If a series of arbitrary terms u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus un and so on is such that the series mod u1 plus mod u2 plus mod u3 mod un and so on is convergent, then the series un is said to be absolutely convergent. And in the case where the series sigma mod un is divergent but the series un is convergent, then the series un is said to be conditionally convergent. You can find assignments on this chapter on this website. Remember that their database is updated frequently, so if you can't find something you're looking for today, you might find it tomorrow. All details are in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.